Well, hello, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. Jujitsu 2000 here today. I'm back. I hope you're doing fantastic out there. In this video today, we have an offering from CycleBat. This is their 12 volt, 10 amp lithium iron phosphate battery. As you can see, it comes packaged very well. Here is a look at the back of the packaging. You can see there's some cautions here. And then there's a packing list. You get a battery, you get a start guide, user manual, and a brand identity. So very cool. Without further ado, let's go ahead and open this battery up. The current retail price at the time of me filming this video for this battery is about $36.99. These are small lithium iron phosphate batteries. They have tons of uses. They do include a five-year warranty on these batteries, which is fantastic. So first thing that we see here is this little package here. It's kind of like a Ziploc bag. It's got a warranty card and a user manual. So here's a look at the warranty card. Very nice, easy to fill out. And then on the back here, it talks a little bit about the product and why you would want to go with CycleBat. So I want to say thank you right off the bat to CycleBat for sending this battery out for review. The next thing that we see is the Let's Get Started card. So right here, learn before you use. Talks about charging the battery. It talks about the operation precautions. And then on the back side, it gives us some basic wiring information, talking about when you're connecting uh, different batteries in parallel or series. I think they're recommending that you use the same type and capacity of battery and age of battery for that matter. And then of course, right here by my thumb, it tells you that you can run some certain wattage appliances and things like that, and then charge it every three months. And then of course, right there, little thing about cycle bat so very very cool and then of course we have the product manual which is really nice we're gonna just kind of scroll through there quickly I'm gonna not spend a lot of time here but we will look through it so right there is the dimensions of the battery the weight of the battery it talks about the terminals and then right here are some parameters of the battery this is really good information. I'll be talking about a lot of this stuff in the video here today. And then it talks about charging the battery. You do have to have a dedicated lithium iron phosphate battery charger. You cannot use just any battery charger with these types of batteries. It also recommends at least 20 watts of solar power if you're going to use solar to charge it. So very cool. And state of charge, capacity and voltage gives you a little bit of information about that very cool and then here are some of the state of charge voltages so this little chart is really cool if you take an amp meter or a volt meter and you check the voltage of the battery it'll give you an approximate state of charge of where your battery is so that chart is really nice and then of course right here it talks about the battery management system a little bit on the battery which is nice. These lithium phosphate batteries have a nice BMS on them. And then of course talks a little bit more about things, what to do, and then right here on this page it talks about series and parallel connections, which I'll talk about a little bit more, but they do give you some nice diagrams to look at. This user manual looks pretty pretty straightforward, pretty easy to read, easy to understand. And then right here it's showing you can run four batteries in a series and then of course four batteries in parallel so very nice we're gonna move on connect the batteries in a series now before you make any of these connections whether it's parallel or series it's highly recommended by battery manufacturers that you charge these up before you make any connections 
that way the depth of discharge state of charge all those types of things are the same and then of course it's talking a little bit more about connecting in parallel things like that so I'm just gonna scroll through this fairly quickly and then you can connect batteries in both series and parallel and it'll talk about that a little bit right there by my thumb so very cool and then it talks about some of the power inverters and the settings so here's some information there this is a nice user manual for this battery and then of course some warnings to watch out for and then on the back it just says cycle bat so nice and as you can see it comes packaged in this little bag it's taped shut this is nice because it keeps the battery dust free and clean and this battery is not real heavy it comes with these little terminal covers on there those are to prevent the battery from short circuiting so it's nice that they include that and then of course there's some precautions and warning information on the back of the battery here's a look at the front of the battery very nice looking battery it's not very heavy lithium iron phosphate deep cycle battery and as you can see it's very easy to understand which is the positive or negative terminal not just by the colors but they are stamped in there a little plus sign and a little minus sign so very very nice so one of my favorite things to do when I get a new battery is to test the voltage of the battery so I have my voltmeter there I'm gonna test it out of the box 13.18 volts is what I'm getting right now out of the box 13.18 so I need to put this thing on charge so now I've got my lithium iron phosphate battery charger connected I want to talk a little bit more about this battery and talk about the cycles so this battery offers 5,000 cycles that is 100 percent depth of discharge and those amount of cycles will get us approximately 10 years of life out of this battery that is fantastic this battery does have a 10 amp BMS we need to charge this battery every three months and store it between 50 degrees Fahrenheit and 95 degrees Fahrenheit we can connect four of these batteries in a series that would create 48 to 51.2 volts at 10 amps or we can run four of these in parallel we would keep the 12.8 volt but we would have 40 amp of capacity now when you make those connections it's highly recommended that you use a number 10 gauge wire now you can also do four in series and in parallel so a total of 16 batteries if you wanted to do that some of you out there watching aren't quite sure why you would need a small battery like this these are for things like power wheels or if you're running a fish finder maybe you have some solar powered security cameras or game cameras or something like that out on your property uh, if you're going to be running a fence or gate opener or ham radio station for communications maybe you want to take it camping and do light duty things like charge your phone your GoPro stuff like that uh, or even run a laptop or maybe you're a van lifer and you want to game in a van you want to run a gaming console a battery like this is perfect for stuff like that you could run TVs and security cameras lighting and the cool thing about these batteries is they use those F2 terminals which is these guys right here so if you pick some of these up I got these at Home Depot you can make yourself a set of jumper wires that looks like this so that's what you would need to connect multiple batteries in parallel or in series if you wanted to run a deer feeder or maybe even a door opener or portable radios very very cool this battery is lightweight it weighs 2.1 pounds it is 5.95 inches wide 2.56 inches deep and it is 3.7 inches tall so it's a very small compact battery this battery does have low temperature charge protection so what that means if you charge this battery you need to be above 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees centigrade the cool thing about this is if you drop below that the battery will shut itself down 
to prevent damage of the battery and then it will recover itself when temperatures get to 41 degrees Fahrenheit or 5 degrees centigrade. That is fantastic. Now batteries like this, lithium iron phosphate batteries, are one quarter of the weight of a lead acid battery. In fact, if you were to take the equivalent lead acid battery for the weight, you would not get a 10 amp hour capacity. It would just be too heavy. So you get twice the amount of usable energy and up to 10 times more cycles out of the lifespan of a battery like this. These batteries are made from grade A cells and if you want to find the watt hour capacity of the battery it's very simple you multiply the voltage times the amp hour and that'll give you 128 watt hours of power that is also the load amount of power that this battery can handle so very very cool now the charge current that this battery likes is about 10 amps and the discharge current the maximum discharge current is 10 amps now it will peak at 20 amps of discharge but it'll only do that for five seconds now it does have multiple protection systems because of the battery management system it does have overcharge protection over discharge protection over current protection over voltage protection short circuit protection high temperature protection and low temperature protection as we discussed earlier so these are really nice batteries now at this time I'm noticing that my charger light has turned green so charging is complete let's go ahead and get my voltmeter back out and let's test the voltage of this battery now that charging is complete so let me pull off my charger I've got my voltmeter there hopefully you guys are going to be able to see that in the video let's get that there we are looking at 13.92 volts that is fully charged that is absolutely fantastic so with the 13.92 volts if we come back to this chart state of charge 13.5 volts is actually 100 percent so we are above that this is a fantastic charge that we've got on this battery 13.92 is fantastic one of my favorite things to use one of these small batteries for is this small solar setup that I have here I have a charge controller that is disconnected from the solar panel I have a power inverter which I can connect with these little alligator clips to my battery so as soon as this thing comes to life you'll see on the charge controller it will give me the voltage of the battery once I have this charge controller energized I can plug in my solar panel right here just like that and now I can turn on this power inverter and use these outlets charge devices with USB and this is a really nice portable unit that I can use and it works fantastic with these small batteries like this. This is easy to build, it doesn't cost a lot of money, and it's very, very efficient. As you can see on the charge controller, I'm looking at 13.9 volts, and I can also see that right here on the power inverter. So you could mix and match whatever type of solar panel you want, whatever type of power inverter you want, or whatever type of charge controller you want, but a system like this it only costs like less than a hundred dollars to build and it's very very efficient I take this thing out with me a lot when I'm gonna be filming uh, or if I'm gonna be camping and I want to run things for long periods of time this is a good setup for things like that and here's just a closer look at that setup it works very well and it's extremely easy to hook up now I'm not gonna be plugging in devices and testing and stuff like that on this video today I'm just going to be showing you some of the possibilities I'm going to show you how easy it is to connect multiple batteries uh, the first connection that I'll do is connecting them in parallel so I'll take these little wires that I made and I'll go from the negative on battery number one to the negative on battery number two so just like that 
and then I'll do the same thing with the positives. I'll go from positive number one to positive number two. And now we have these batteries connected in parallel. So if we wanted to take a positive and a negative from this bank, we would take the positive from number two and the negative from number one and run that to whatever we're wanting to power. Now if I wanted to change the configuration up and run these in a series, it's even simpler. So what we'll do is we'll only need one wire for that. We'll set them like this and we will go from positive on battery number one to the negative on battery number two. This will give us 24 volts of power and then we have the negative from battery one and the positive from battery two and that's what we'll run to our 24 volt appliance. So that's what it looks like wired in a series. It's extremely easy. Hopefully that helps somebody out there out. It's very very easy. But again before you make any connections like this I highly recommend that both batteries are fully charged before you do any kind of connections like that. So as you're watching this video you might be wondering what are my final thoughts on this battery. I think these batteries are absolutely fantastic. I didn't do any testing in this video. I've used batteries like this lots and lots and lots of times and they work really good. So I like what I'm seeing here. The little solar setup that I had with the charge controller and the power inverter, you can run a lot of things off of a small battery like this. In fact, I've done many, many videos in the past where I'm using a small battery like this to run all kinds of stuff. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. This was a fun video to make. These batteries are really nice and they will last a long time. If you're going to build like a tiny micro house, you want to watch TV and stuff like that, do extremely light duty stuff, run a light, LED lights, charge your phone, stuff like that. Batteries like this are ideal for things like that. So if you're interested in this battery, I'll put a link in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a beautiful day. We'll see you on the next one. Bye for now, everybody.